me Williams and today we'll be talking about taxation of tech startups in Pakistan. Today is the 19th of April 2020 and whenever we talk about taxation we always talk in the context of a financial or tax year. So at this moment in time we are in tax year 2020. And tax year 2020 means a financial year, a tax year that started on 1st of July 2019 and will end on 30th of June 2020. Similarly, on 1st of July 2020, the tax year 2021 will start. And if we talk about uh, the year July 1st, 2012, it means that it was tax year 2013. So every, every year there is a tax year and all the income that you earn as an individual, as a sole proprietor or as a partnership business or as a private or public limited company, you have to pay your tax after that tax year ends. But there are different tax exemptions in the tax code of Pakistan and we'll be talking about taxation of tech startups in Pakistan. So to start with, the first and most fundamental question is since we are talking about tax exemption, so every business would like to say that they are a, they are a startup. And if you look in a very broad manner, every business that starts is a startup be it a shop or a, an accountant or a manufacturing business or a digital marketing online business. But the tax law specifies that a startup is something special and we are going to first discuss what are the special ingredients that make any business a startup for tax purpose in Pakistan. You may discuss uh, a tax startup to be something matlab, for the purpose of marketing or you may discuss tax startups from the point of view of technology. But today in this video, we are talking about uh, the taxation of startups in Pakistan. And for the starting point is that a business that is run by a resident person which means that since Facebook, Google don't have any permanent business place in Pakistan, so they don't qualify for this. And the first, that these are many conditions. All of these conditions have to be met, but uh, slowly and gradually, many of the tech startups that we use every day, or we are part of them, may not qualify in this definition. So this definition is important if you want to uh, take advantage of tax exemption for startups in Pakistan. So first of all, it should be a business. It can't be a non-profit organization. It has to be a business which is managed or run or started by a resident person. Resident person means in case of an individual, it means a person who lives in Pakistan for more than 183 days or a registered partnership business in Pakistan or registered company in Pakistan under the SECP. So the, all of these conditions have to be met. This is the second condition. The third condition is that the business should have started on or after July 1st, 2012, which means that it should have started in tax year 2013. We are here in tax year 2020. And this definition and these uh, exemptions were put in the Pakistani tax law for tax year 2018 and onwards. So we are well in the second, third year of tax exemption. So it should be a business managed by a resident person started on or after 2012. And it should be engaged it in or intends to offer means that it may have started or it is planning to start with a minimum viable product 
and uh, the main the main thing that will distinguish the startup business from every other digital business is that they are providing technology driven products and services so this point number 5 and 6 is the most important and since this is the tax law and it has only been two tax years that this definition has been in the tax law there is no appellant or legal opinion on what is technology driven products or technology driven services just to take an example for example if you provide online marketing so according to the sense of this definition this is not technology driven product or services but you may argue that it is technology driven product and services but you have to see that all of these conditions have to be met so we'll uh, the first part the first research point that this condition is about your business so we'll complete it a business run by a resident person uh, started after 2012 engaged in or intends to offer technology driven product and services and an easy example would be uber or kareem which are providing a platform basically for doing something that we used to do manually or on the phone so if you have a business which is providing technology driven products or services or both to any sector of the economy be it health sector be it uh, transportation telecommunication education so this was the first point which ha- which has to be satisfied by your business and if you are a tech startup looking to start business in pakistan if you are a local or an international startup you have to first see that if these conditions are being met by your startup if you are doing something this which is only using the internet it may not qualify in this first part since there is no technology driven and uh, according to my experience of taxation this technology driven most probably means that this technology is also owned by you so in that sense it will be very clear if you have a patent if you have some kind of rights franchise on this technology that you are using other than a subscription that you may get from google or facebook or any technology platform that lets you like amazon that lets you build your platform on that so this technology driven will primarily mean that you own or you are is somehow in control of this technology and through this technology you are providing a product and service just like uber and kareem own the platform on which drivers and the uh, right uh, takers gather and they do their transaction so this is the first part the second part is also interesting that basically and when you have such a business this business has obviously ha- has to be registered with the federal board of revenue but for this definition and for this exemption you have to register this business with the pakistan software export board and the third condition is the startup that you have registered should have a sales of annual sales of less than 100 million rupees and in urdu that is 10 crore rupees 100 million rupees in each of the last 5 years so if you have been uh, running your business in issuing your invoices for the past 2 years for every year your annual sales to your customers should be less than 100 million rupees these are the three conditions which have been put in for tax year 2018 19 now 20 and going forward so basically when your business along with your own status and your operations and your technology is registered with pakistan software export board and you are providing services to your uh, customers then and only then the point of taxation uh, arises and the main point of this video is that 
to make sense of this tax exemption. So if you complete or fulfill all of these requirements and this is just an informational video, you are requested to consult your legal counsel before acting upon this advice. But if you uh, fulfill this requirement, then your startup in Pakistan will be exempt from income tax for the first three years of your business and the first year will start when you register with your with Pakistan Software Export Board which is online and very easy. Basically you may have an idea and you may have been working on that idea for two years but you don't need this tax exemption because this tax exemption is against the income the profits that you will earn so once you start uh, issuing your invoice sales invoice to your customers then you should consider before uh, issuing your first sales sales invoice uh, the exemption and how you can claim it and the way is to build your business like this then register with Pakistan stock uh, software export board and then manage your sales till then. So you will get exemption from the income once you start selling uh, your product and services and the income that you earn will be exempt from tax. So what does it mean actually that you don't have to pay any tax if you are a startup according to these definition and criteria as discussed in this video which means that when you make sales you get money from your customers then you pay off all your expenses like your salaries rent your technology bills and the amount that the amount that stays behind is your net profit and if you were a regular business you would have to pay tax starting from 2-3% up to 35% on your net profits but since you are a startup you don't have to pay any tax on this so if you earned 100,000 rupees you get to keep though that money in your business or withdraw it for your personal use without paying any taxes along with this there is also another tax that businesses have to pay even if they don't earn any net profit during the year that is even if they earn zero profits or make losses which means that the sales you made the money that you received from your customer was less than the money that you paid to your employees and for other business expenses even if you make losses you have to pay minimum tax which is calculated by multiplying the sales amount with 1.5% tax and the minimum amount has to be paid by every business but if you are a startup so the government the FBR Federal Board of Revenue has given you even exemption in this case where you don't have to pay tax calculated on the basis of your sales so both taxes which a regular business has to pay either of these for example it has to pay on net profits and if it, if it has losses then it has to pay on the basis of its sales you are exempt from tax income tax this doesn't mean that you don't have to register with the service tax authorities if you are providing services and with the sales tax authorities if you are providing products for that we'll make another video but today we were discussing that tax of tech startups in Pakistan have exemption for the first three years uh, starting from the first year when you register with Pakistan Software Export Board and that year should be the year that you start issuing invoices to your customers so I am your host and tax dost Anthony Williams you are watching tax dosti reporting videos and uh, you can subscribe to our channel for more videos on tech and tax.